Thank you and welcome back to Champion News Talk Radio brought to you by championnews.net. This is Carol Parisi, Jack Roser, and myself are speaking with John Bambanek, who is running for District 52 in the Senate. And we were speaking about the farmers mm -hmm. and environmental issues. John, could you speak a little bit about that? Well, there's several kind of movements afoot in terms of, you know, this is this Chesapeake Bay where it's, we want to make sure that the Chesapeake Bay watershed is pure of stuff. So what the, essentially they're writing regulations that would, in essence, control everything you put into the ground, even anywhere east of the Mississippi. So the fertilizer you use, the pesticides, you know, down to the seeds. So you have your everyday farmer who's going to have to go to the federal government to deal with all of these regulations to do what they've been doing or what people have been doing with the land in this country for centuries or around the world for eons that now is you know, greatly regulated by the government based on spurious, if any, scientific basis. Now, how is this going to help these farmers be more prosperous? It isn't. It's going to impose great costs upon them. Uh, <clears throat> there, it, there's no return for it, you know, likely, you know, based on his, historical in terms of how they look at pesticides and fertilizers. They'll probably restrict away some of the most effective stuff, so the crop yields are going to take a hit, and you have to spin up at least you know, one enforcement agency that's going to do inspections, and there'll be permits and fees, uh, where, like I said, you're imposing costs, you're imposing burdens, and they're going to be seeing diminished returns for what they've always been doing for decades <clears throat> and centuries. So I guess my question now is, it's going to create another government bureaucracy, mm -hmm. but it's going to hurt the free markets. Well, it's, yeah, it's people in Washington, D.C. not really thinking about the problem, and it's the same problem in Springfield. They're disconnected from the real world, and they say, well, you shouldn't be able to do that. Uh, just this week, it's big news. The federal government came in and saying, oh, well, if you're driving a truck for agricultural purposes, that's commercial. So now when you normally have a 10, 12-year-old boy driving the truck, you know, around the farm, well, no, now he needs a CDL, which means, well... Well, he's not I, even allowed to have a driver's license. Yeah, but we've he's always... He's allowed to drive his, yeah, family. Well, yeah, you're driving on the family farm, nobody really cares. What are you going to hit? A stalk of corn? But now right. the federal government comes in, no, 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 we, we got to stop that. Again, now, now we're imposing all sorts of but costs on But that's somebody's farms. personal property. Why would that even... Because our government Big views driving right as there. a privilege. You know what? What about personal property rights? You no, know, it, it's uh, actually, uh, it isn't a privilege. Uh, it, it's just a, a bureaucrat sticking a snoot uh, into our lives uh, in order to make his job right. I, I want to inform you that there mm -hmm. are three rules that must be observed uh, when any bureaucratic commission is instituted in the government. And uh, the first rule is that uh, those on the commission must work to preserve the problem. <laughs> and uh, the second rule is if their problem gets worse, uh, they must uh, have more money. And in the third position, uh, if, the, uh, if the problem goes away, they must invent a new, a problem. new problem. So uh, that's the three rules of, of uh, bureaucrats. And you can tell they all know that rule, and uh, we're all paying for it. Well, John, how are we going to do better in Springfield? How are you going to do better in Springfield to stop all of this bureaucratic <clears throat> layering that we're having. Well, I, it, it starts by repealing, repealing laws that don't make sense anymore, uh, repealing regulations that don't make sense anymore, uh, taking fees and programs that don't make any sense anymore, and go away. And just one brief example: we all have cars. You know, every year we pay. I think it's ninety-nine dollars to renew our sticker. Mm -hmm. What service do we get for that? We get a group of bureaucrats who will give us our sticker every year. It is a self-funding bureaucracy that provides no public value whatsoever because there's a title fee when you buy the car, so the title's already registered. You already pay for the plates when you get the plates the first time. Mm -hmm. Your annual registration does nothing except fund people who collect the money for annual registration. Mm -hmm. That makes no sense, and those kind of things need to come to an end, too. Yeah, but if Illinois is bankrupt, I, I, do you think that's something that would be the first thing that would go, or do you think some kind of reforms for these pensions that clearly are what's so bankrupt. The police the uh, at my company, uh, where we have a lot of cars parked in our parking lot, the police recently came through and uh, gave them citations for not having the local uh, permit. Uh, there's a lot of people working there that don't live in that community. Uh, so that's freelancing for what? 
Well, it's just entrepreneurial government. Let's let's get money in the door to fund stuff that we want to fund versus yeah. let's serve the actual public need, preserve order, reduce crime, and let do what's minimally necessary for a thriving society. And, and incidentally, I'm not aggravated with the police department where my company is because actually they've been uh, very helpful and there's very few things like that that happen. Well, there's so many foreclosed properties, so these local governments aren't getting their taxes or property taxes paid as quickly. Too as many they regulations. Can. Yeah, yeah. What would be the first thing you would do in Springfield, John? Well, before I'd swear in, if I was elected, I'd spend the time between November and January writing legislation that I would introduce when I was sworn in. So I uh, set a goal of maybe 100 pieces of legislation. Most of it will be repealing stuff. Uh, I'd hold a budget. I'd write a budget, but I'd hold it until the government did, governor did his address, because while well, he's the governor, he deserves the respect of doing his budget address first. It'll be a bad budget, but I'll let him go first. Uh, and then push for these, legislation, uh, these items of legislation and these packages to put Illinois back to work. You know, what, real quick question, because we're going to go to break here, but what would be your first item of legislation that you would do? And, and legislator pensions. And legislator pensions. And, and health care benefits, to be honest. You know, Would people you talk it? about no. term limits. If you eliminated the pensions, you'd get a lot of term limits. Yeah, yeah. And people aren't going to stay for 20, 30 years if they're not going to get that big perk. But That's right. it's a part-time job. Even if you accept a public pension as legitimate, nobody gets a pension for a part-time job. Well, we're going to talk about what John Biamonek is going to do in the Senate District 52 after the break. Stay with us. Thank you.